Hey everyone, the bias against Tesla in the media is rampant and it's real. Some media outlets seem to be clutching at every single straw they can get their grimy little hands on and today's article is no different. We've talked about why the media has an axe to grind against Tesla, so if you're not familiar, I recommend checking out any number of videos I've made on that subject. But to keep a long story short, it's because of money. Legacy Auto pays billions of dollars via advertising and other ways for positive coverage in media outlets, while Tesla, on the other hand, doesn't advertise. So keep that in mind as we take a look at this story. It's the idea that the author has to write a slant because they need to write the article a certain way, and they won't let the truth stand in that way. Today we're looking at an article coming from Hot Cars and it's titled 10 Electric Cars We'd Rather Buy Than a Tesla Model 3 and it's actually kind of funny the lengths the author is willing to go to to avoid recommending a Tesla Model 3. I won't go over every single option they mention because some of them are relatively reasonable, I'll just go over the ridiculous ones. They mention the likes of the Ionic 5 and the Mustang Mach-E and the Polestar 2 and so on, which I think you can make a reasonable case for those vehicles to compete with the Tesla Model 3. I personally think the Model 3 is a better vehicle for most people, but at least it's in the realm of possibility. But then they start mentioning some of the other vehicles and it gets a bit silly. Let's check out the article. Number four on their list of cars they'd rather buy than a Tesla Model 3, they bring in the Lucid Air. The article says, Sure, it's in a different price bracket compared to the Model 3, but it's still a spectacular electric luxury car. The top of the line version is way too expensive, but the base model is actually a lot closer in price to the Model 3, especially if full self-driving is equipped on the latter. And okay, before we get too far along, let's actually look at the pricing. Right now, the Model 3 starts at about 45 grand, but if we try to even up the specs with the Lucid, we should look at the long range version that costs about 51 grand and has a range of 334 miles. The cheapest Lucid is called the Lucid Air Pure and that starts at 77 grand. That's about 50% more expensive than the Model 3, although the Lucid Air does claim more miles at 406 miles of range. They have nearly identical 0 to 60 times at around 4.1 seconds apiece. They also mention that if you include the full self-driving package on the Tesla, then the prices get closer, which is true, but if you want to include Lucid's own semi-autonomous driving package, which they call the Dream Drive Pro, that's an add-on cost. So these two vehicles are clearly in a different price bracket, but honestly, that's not even my biggest problem with the author comparing them against each other. My biggest issue here is that while the Model 3 is available today, as in you can go out right now and pick one up, the Lucid isn't even planning to begin shipping this cheapest model until sometime in 2023. Meaning we really can't compare the Model 3 in 2021 with the Lucid Air Pure in 2023. That is not a fair comparison. But then I think it gets even more complicated because as we all know, EV startups and car companies in general, when they're releasing new products, generally they have delays and complications with bringing vehicles to market. This isn't a knock against Lucid by any means, but this is to say just because they plan to bring the model to customers in 2023 doesn't mean it'll actually happen. For example, Lucid had originally planned to bring the Air to market back in late 2020, but because of setbacks and delays, that got bumped back to the end of 2021 about a year later. Now, the world has been going through a lot with the pandemic and the chip shortage and everything else, but even still, I'm just saying that the 2023 delivery date is far from guaranteed. Long story short, it doesn't exactly seem reasonable to compare a car that's already out and you can buy to a car that won't be out for at least a year or more in the best case scenario. Now I should say for disclosure purposes, I'm currently long on both Tesla and Lucid. Although I do try my best to not let my investments bias my research, they inevitably do to some degree. Regardless, if you're in 2021 and you'd rather buy a Lucid Air Pure than a Tesla Model 3, be my guest, but you're gonna be walking everywhere for a while. Anyways, don't wanna to get too stuck on Lucid. Let's see what else they've got on their list. Next up, they have the Toyota Mirai. Now, for those of you that know what the Toyota Mirai is, you're probably already laughing. But for those of you that aren't familiar, let me break it down for you. The Mirai is Toyota's hydrogen-powered semi. Now, I have some pretty strong opinions on hydrogen, but I'll try and keep things neutral for this video. Here are the facts. If you buy a Toyota Mirai, you better hope you live in California because if you live anywhere else in the US, you aren't going to be able to fill up your car. There are some fill-up stations on the East Coast, but they are few and far between and really aren't enough to make the Toyota a viable option. So odds are, just on refueling station location alone, the Mirai isn't for you. But let's say you actually do live in California. Well, things still aren't perfect. 
First of all, while there are around 40 stations in the state, unless you live really close to one of those stations, you're gonna have a long drive to and from the station just to fill up your tank, giving you a real world range of less than advertised. But it's not just refueling station location, the cost should be a factor too. Right now, hydrogen in California costs around $16.5 per kilogram at the pump, and the Mirai has about a five kilogram tank. That puts the empty to full refueling cost at just over $80. Considering the Mirai has a range of around 400 miles per tank, that's significantly more expensive than even a gas car and many times more expensive than the Model 3, for example. And it's not just at the pump that the costs are higher. The Mirai also has a starting price of 50 grand, which is about the same as a Model 3. So you're paying the same sticker price for a car that's more expensive to fuel and can't leave the state of California. I'm not exactly sure why hot cars would choose the Mirai over the Model 3, but I would love to hear them try and justify that choice. They also say that it takes a lot less to fill up than a regular EV and you get a lot more range. And I assume they mean the Mirai takes a lot less time to fill up because it takes a lot more dollars, but then they say it gets a lot more range. And that's really not true. The Mirai gets about 400 miles per tank, whereas the long range Model 3 that costs the same as the Mirai gets an EPA estimated 334 miles. But that longest range Mirai is rear wheel drive only, whereas the Tesla is all wheel drive. And if you read through the consumer reviews for the Mirai, although it may have an estimated range of 400 miles, many customers Customers say that in real world usage, that's closer to 200 miles. Also, one huge disadvantage with the Mirai is that you can't charge at your house like a Model 3. In theory, you can plug your Model 3 in every single night, meaning you wake up in the morning with a full tank, so to speak. The Mirai doesn't have that option, so you'll be forced to go to the hydrogen fuel pump regularly. But it's even worse than that. The few fuel stations that are available are known to constantly be out of hydrogen or down for repairs, leaving people stranded. For these reasons and more, the Mirai scored a 2.5 out of 5 on Kelly's Blue Book scale, which needless to say is pretty bad. Anyways, not to harp on the Mirai, it's just to say that this is a clear example of the author of this article reaching for anything to make Tesla look bad, even if that reach doesn't line up with reality at all. But the last car that they'd rather buy over a Model 3 is possibly the funniest. For number one on their list, they have the Porsche Taycan. And yes, you heard that right. For cars they'd rather buy over the Model 3, they have a car that starts at about double the price says the Model 3. They say, while complaints are thrown around about the range, this is one of the most complete luxury electric cars you can buy at the moment. And that's all fine and dandy. I actually think the Taycan is a great luxury EV, but it's not realistically competing against the Model 3. The Taycan starts at $83,000, which is nearly double the starting price of the Model 3, and that's why the Model 3 still has a higher EPA estimated range figure. Now, that base Taycan is about half a second faster with its 0-60 to 60 time, but that's only a small victory. And let me be clear, I'm not trying to say that the Taycan is a bad car, I think it's a fantastic luxury EV, but generally speaking, the Taycan is way out of most prospective EV buyers' budgets. For example, while the Tesla Model 3 sold about 440,000 units in 2020, the Taycan sold around 20,000. And again, this isn't anything against the Porsche, it's just to say that these two vehicles are in completely different price brackets and targeting completely different customers. You can't just say you'd rather buy a Taycan unless you think most buyers are willing to completely ignore price, which I can tell you right now, they're not. Price is incredibly important. But why does this article even matter? Well, to be honest, it doesn't. In and of itself, it really doesn't do much. But this article is, however, an indicator of a larger issue. And that issue is that media outlets such as Hot Car are going to incredible lengths to put Tesla in a bad light so that they can please the legacy automotive companies that are paying their bills. It's the general theme that media outlets are willing to distort the truth and mislead their customers to make their real customers happy. And those real customers are the companies that are paying for advertisements. This article is relatively harmless, but it exposes the level of disinformation these media outlets are willing to put out, and then it makes it harder to trust them when there's a more nuanced and complicated subject. Again, I go into this sort of thing more in other videos, so feel free to check those out. And to the writer of this article, put your money where your mouth is and buy yourself a Toyota Mirai instead of a Model 3, and tell me if you still think that's a recommendation that you want to be telling your readers. 
As always, huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're the reason I can keep making videos like this. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. If you liked this video, give me a like and subscribe. If you loved the video, think about tossing some support my way on Patreon, but only if you have the spare income. If you need the money, please keep it for yourself. Also, if you find an article that's pushing an agenda or spreading misinformation like these Tesla's worse than a Toyota Mirai articles, send it my way. My info is down below like always. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. See you on the next one. Thank you.